What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and welcome to another Universes Mini. In this episode, we're going to be discussing non-canon events. And I got the idea for the topic of this one from the Death Battle cast this week, which was on Sonic vs. Goku for some reason. And Ben was discussing uh, canon and non-canon events and said something I actually agree with, which is rare. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but Ben was discussing uh, the Dragon Ball Z movies, because obviously the Dragon Ball Z movies are non-canon, while the um, manga and anime are canon. So he was discussing, like, why he includes the movies sometimes, even though they're not canon. And he, his reason was basically, I mean, yeah, they're non-canon, but it's still the same Goku. It doesn't contradict the main story, and there's nothing in there that he couldn't possibly do. So basically, that's what Ben said, and it pretty much describes the third rule I have for universes, fictional fights, and pretty much any other versus thing I do, which is... Non-canon events are allowed, sorry, I'm out of breath, as long as they do not contradict the main canon. And that's that's a pretty good rule in my opinion, because um, if you think about it, non-canon means something that didn't happen. But it never means something that couldn't happen. Like, uh, say for example, uh, Fang's ending in Tekken 5. No, wait, bad example, he beats Jinpachi. Okay, Fang's ending in Tekken 6. Um... Fang's ending in Tekken 6, he smashes a gigantic magma boulder or whatever. He, like, catches it out of the air and smashes it. Um, obviously this ending is non-canon, but it doesn't really contradict anything in the main canon. It's just a little reward you get for beating the game with Fang. A little, a little snippet of him doing something cool. And there's no reason it shouldn't be canon. It's something he could totally do, considering the power of the rest of the verse. And it just adds to his list of feats. So just because it's non-canon doesn't mean it can't be counted. And and it's more than just the fact that it's something they didn't do, or something they could do, just didn't do. It's also the fact that it's still made by Namco Bandai. Like, take Tekken Tag Tournament, the Tekken Tag Tournament games, for example. Those games are non-canon, but they are still produced by N Bandai Namco. Katsuhiro Harada is still in charge. All the same people are still there. It's just a non-canon game. So there's really no reason that feats and stats and stuff should, shouldn't be taken from all that. As long as it doesn't contradict the main canon. Like, let's say if Xiaoyu in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 managed to kill Heihachi or something. That obviously wouldn't mean she's able to actually kill Heihachi because one, in the main canon, Heihachi lost to Kazuya and was killed by Kazuya in Tekken 7, which was past Tekken Tag Tournament 2. And second, uh, Shayu isn't strong enough to do that anyways. So since Sh uh, Heihachi was alive past Tekken Tag Tournament 2, and Shayu's ending in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 was killing Heihachi, obviously that contradicts the main canon, so that can't really be counted for Shayu. Obviously she didn't really kill Heihachi in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 ending, I was just using... Uh, imagination as an example. But I'm sure you get what I'm saying, and crossovers also do fall under this rule too, because, I mean, usually two different universes take place at very different times in very different places, so when it crosses over, it's obviously something that couldn't happen and contradicts the main canon of both sides. So obviously crossovers are an automatic no-no, like Super Smash Brothers, for example, or even Street Fighter Cross Tekken, like, Street Fighter and Tekken look like they take place at very different times, like, Tekken is a bit more futuristic, while Street Fighter is a bit more modern day. Uh, so yeah, they're very, very different in time, um, but, of course, Street Fighter cross Tekken, they're both together, and it obviously shouldn't count because they both seem to be from different times. But, something like Akuma from Tekken 7, that is a canon crossover, Akuma in Tekken 7, so what do we do there? If there's a crossover in a canon game, it obviously means you have to make a separate version of the character. So, like, Akuma in Tekken 7 is different than Akuma in Street Fighter. Just like Akuma in Azura's Wrath is different than Akuma in Street Fighter. Because there's no possible way Akuma could be in Azura's Wrath. He's just on the moon, and they kind of come through portals and stuff, and it makes no sense. Nothing actually possible within each of the verses, it just happens. So, obviously, those can't be counted either, as they contradict the main canon and logic of their respected verses. So obviously there are a lot of specific details and certain rules to this whole non-canon stuff when it comes to verses. And so you could just casually take the easy way out and say, no non-canon stuff entirely. But if you remove all non-canon stuff, then do you know how little fighting game characters could actually be used? 
because there are very rare canon endings that involve a very small amount of characters, and that just leaves gigantic rosters with no feats and no scaling or anything, because you don't include non-canon endings, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be included. I mean, they don't contradict the main canon, they're completely possible, and it just makes Versus a lot easier and more fun. Banning non-canon stuff entirely is a very inaccurate and lazy way to do Versus, because you're getting rid of useful information that could happen just because it didn't happen, when it totally could. So if you do your research and look at all the details of the non-canon events you're researching, find out if they fit into the canon, if they contradict anything, if it's possible for the character and if it helps out, then congratulations, you'll get yourself a more accurate and reasonable answer. Just don't get lazy and remove non-canon stuff entirely.